Hi friends, welcome back to our YouTube channel. Today we are going to discuss about food chain. First of all, we have to know what is food chain. Food chain means it is the graphical representation of organism where organism being eating or being eaten, right? We can also call it as the definition also as like the flow of food energy through series of organisms that consume and are being consumed. Simply we can say the graphical representation of organism where organism being eating or being eaten, right? Food chain means graphical graphical representation of organism where organism being eating or being eaten food chain means this is the graphical representation of organism where organism being eating or being eaten it can also says that the flow of food energy through a series of organisms that consume and being consumed right Suppose this is the producer. Producer consumed by consumed by herbivores, right? And the herbivores also called as primary consumers. Herbivores again eaten by secondary consumers or carnivores, right? So food chain, the other definition of food chain is the transfer of energy and matter. Energy and matter right here e for energy m for matter food chain means the transfer of energy and matter from one trophic level to the next trophic level from producer level to the consumer level the from primary consumer level to secondary consumer level right the second definition of food chain is that the flow of energy and matter from one trophic level to next trophic level or from one organism to next organism is by food chain, right? So, suppose we are taking here we are taking grassland as a food chain, right? Here the producer here the producer is grass here there are number of producers that is uh, grasses right here the prime here the producer is the grass the producer eaten by primary consumer or here the primary consumer is grasshopper the grasshopper may be eaten by frog the secondary consumer right the secondary consumer or primary carnivores the frog then after eaten by snake that is tertiary consumer the tertiary consumer then eaten by maybe it is eaten by final consumer that is hog right later on the final consumer decomposes by the decomposer here the decomposer is fungus right this is the small example of grassland food chain grassland food chain right okay in general in general food chain have three to five trophic levels food chain have three to five trophic levels We already covered we already covered the 
trophic levels chapter right so it's already known about uh, trophic levels so in generally food chains have three to five trophic levels then there is a question arises why are food chains relatively short right why food chain why food chains are relatively short there is a question arises here why food chains are relatively short right why why food chain have 3 to 5 trophic levels not more than that not why it is uh, up to 15 trophic levels right in generally food chains have 3 to 5 trophic levels why it is why are food chains relatively short right there are two hypotheses which explains why food chains are relatively short right the first hypothesis is known as energetic hypothesis energetic hypothesis the second hypothesis which uh, explains about why food chains are relatively short that is dynamic stability hypothesis what is that dynamic stability hypothesis the first hypothesis which explains about uh, number of trophic levels that is energetic hypothesis the second one is dynamic stability hypothesis which explains about why food chains are relatively short we are going to discuss the first one first right energetic hypothesis suppose we are taking a long food chain right suppose we are taking a trophic levels of 8 or 9 right suppose a suppose a is the trophic level then the second trophic level is b third trophic level is c fourth trophic level is d five uh, fifth trophic level is e six trophic level is f here there are six trophic level right but in generally there are three to five trophic levels it is a large trophic levels right here the producer is here the producer is a right in case of energetic hypothesis it also called a 10 percent law 10 percent law it relay with 10 percent law here when energy or matter transfer from producer to primary consumer that is a to b only 10 percent of energy transfer right and remaining loss in the form of heat loss of energy in the form of heat right only 10 percent if 10 percent means if 10 kilocalorie transfer from a to b right then remaining heat loss occur right from b to c again 10 percent of energy losses uh, loss occur so 10 percent of that 10 percent that is one kilo calorie so remaining loss in the form of it so the energy from b to c only one kilo calorie transfer right the c having only one kilo calorie energy and c transfer to d only 10 percent of it that is 0 0.1 kilo calorie remaining loss in the form of feet from d to e only 10 percent of energy transferred that is 10 percent of 0 0.1 kilo calorie is equal to 0 0.01 kilo calorie remaining loss in the form of feet 
from e to at profit level the e transfer only 10% of that energy that is 0.001 kilo calorie remaining loss in the form of heat so the final in case of the final consumer or final trophic level the amount of energy the, the amount of energy consumed by the final consumers is very much less, less amount of energy captured by the final consumers right so the trophic level cannot sustain due to less amount of energy less energy so here trophic level cannot sustain here the producer or lower trophic level lower trophic level having more amount of energy whenever it transfer from one trophic level to next trophic level the, the amount of energy losses in the form of heat and the amount of energy transfer also decreases right so the final consumer get less amount of energy if it is if it is having more trophic level like uh, here it is sixth trophic level the final consumer is in sixth trophic level so it get lesser amount of energy so the trophic level can sustain in this case we are taking fourth trophic levels if we transfer amount of energy from a to b from lower trophic level that is producer level to primary consumer then it will only transport 10 kilo calorie that is 10 percent of energy right and remaining loss in the form of feet and the b transfer 10 kilo calorie 10 percent of 10 kilo calorie that is 1 kilo calorie and remaining loss in the form of heat the c trophic level get only 1 kilo calorie and it transfer 10 percent of 1 kilo calorie that is 0 0.1 kilo calorie and remaining loss in the form of heat so here the final consumer or final trophic level get 0 0.1 kilo calorie energy here the amount of energy get by the higher trophic level or the final trophic level is sufficient to sustain so the final trophic level can sustain right so trophic level sustain trophic level sustain here right so it is necessary to shorter the trophic levels right the according to energetic hypothesis the food chain relatively short to maintain our to sustain our trophic level or to provide more amount of energy to uh, final trophic levels right the second hypothesis which explains about the number of trophic levels and why are the food chains relatively short that is the dynamic stability hypothesis which explains about it the second hypothesis is dynamic stability hypothesis dynamic stability hypothesis we are going to discuss in two ways first of all we have to take uh, the dynamic stability hypothesis in case of long trophic levels and second time we have to take in short trophic levels right here the trophic levels are larger trophic levels right here the lower trophic levels in case of lower trophic level here producer is the A right and the final consumer is the F right 
that is in case of higher trophic levels but in case of dynamic stability hypothesis if we are talking about uh, long food chain then if any disturbance occur in if any disturbance occur in lower trophic levels that means any catatrophic disturbance if any or any biological disturbance if any disturbance occurs in lower trophic levels in case of long food chain right then the impact of that disturbance in higher trophic levels impact of disturbance in higher trophic levels is much more higher here the impact of disturbance in higher trophic level is higher right impact is more so the final trophic level the higher trophic level cannot sustain so here the food chain collapse right so the final trophic level collapse I am repeating again, if any disturbance occur in lower trophic level, then the impact of that disturbance in a higher trophic level is much more higher. So, the trophic level cannot sustain or collapse, right? So, here the trophic level cannot sustain, right? Now, we are going to discuss about the hypothesis in case of lesser trophic level right suppose we are taking uh, four four number of trophic levels here in case of lower trophic level a is the producer right producer here the final consumer is d in case of higher trophic levels we are applying the same formula if any disturbance if any disturbance or if any disturbance occur at lower trophic level then the impact of that disturbance occur in case of higher trophic level is lesser here the impact impact of that disturbance impact of that disturbance is lesser in case of higher trophic level so here trophic level trophic level sustain can't collapse right here the trophic level cannot collapse right cannot collapse so in this hypothesis it says that if trophic level is less then the impact if any disturbance occur in lower trophic level then the impact of that disturbance is less in case of high trophic level because here the trophic level is less right so the impact also uh, the disturbance also less so the, tro the trophic level sustain and it can collapse these are the two hypotheses which explains why food chains are relatively short. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please like, share and subscribe to our YouTube channel. ICN Biology. Thank you so much.